Forget drugs, forget knives. The biggest threat to your kids lies in your fridge. One in three children in the UK are overweight or obese, and this generation are facing a lifetime of chronic medical conditions and premature death. But one man has a mission to revolutionise the health of our children. Over the next six weeks, Britain's youngest professor of obesity and exercise, Paul Gately, will help six desperate kids battle their weight and get fit for life. Nine-year-old Jessica weighs a staggering ten stone and it's making her life an absolute misery. I feel quite sad when people call me fatty, fatty bone. And there's nothing Dad Dave and Mum Ellen can do to stop it. She's got plenty of bruises, you know, where they push her over. And when they finally you know face up to the true extent of Jessica's something. weight problem, it is all too much. First time I've seen the most of But he's your daughter and that's why. Meet the Forrester family. Mum Ellen, Dad Dave, 12-year-old Jamie, and then there's Jessica, who at nine years old weighs an astonishing ten stone four pounds. Ellen and Dave Forrester thought they had the perfect family unit, <laughs> with one son and one daughter. But as Jessica has got older, her weight has ballooned to outlandish proportions. When you go out shopping, kids look at her and they snigger. You can see them sniggering, it's really hurtful. Jessica's weight gain is now not a family niggle, it's a daily nightmare. Will you? You're down there. Help me, will you? Mum and Dad have full-time jobs, and so there's nothing left for Jessica Mommy? to do but eat. And eat. And eat. We can't do anything about it. We've tried. Jessica's eating habits are out of control. She's eating enough for three adult men. Are you sure you want to eat that, that pancake roll as well? Yes, yeah. you will. Starving. Jessica's channeling those excess calories into creating havoc at home. Jessica's always messing about and <laughs> peeing everywhere. I can't control her. I can't even lift her, let alone control her. No stones, I don't think so. Mommy, I'm hungry. With all of the doors now closed to them, they need urgent action. But help is at hand in the form of Paul Gately. He's the youngest professor of obesity and exercise in the country. When he's not lecturing at the Leeds Metropolitan University, he's helping hundreds of obese children shed pounds at the university's annual summer weight loss camp. Finding out the root causes of why people are overweight is fundamental to my work. Long-term weight loss can only be achieved if you understand the person you are trying to help. But the man of science, Paul, is also a man of action, an activity addict who can turn his hand to any sport. Paul's going to spend the next six weeks helping Jess on the way to a fitter, more active life. I can see lots of problems here, and this could be my toughest challenge yet. The family have little confidence, and they seem to have given up on life. The family needs a makeover, both externally and, importantly, internally. I need to change Jessica's appearance, her environment and the way her family and her speak to each other and treat each other. If Jessica stands any chance of losing weight, the foresters need to lose the apathy and take control. Today is the most important day in the Forrester family's life. They've been invited to Leeds, where Paul will conduct a series of tests in his high-tech lab. The lab is crammed full with state-of-the-art equipment that can measure a child's weight and analyse their body fat with pinpoint accuracy. Hello, guys. How are you doing? I'm Paul. Nice to meet you. Up over there for me. After the formalities, Paul gets straight to work, first measuring her height, then weight. Then, her body fat is assessed in a state-of-the-art bod pod, which can separate and analyse every fibre of the body to work out the proportion of fat to bone and muscle. And finally, Paul puts Jess to work on the treadmill to assess her fitness. And without even looking at the stats, it's obvious Jess is not used to exercise. The tests have just finished with Jessica. I need to have a chat with her to find out what's going on. It seems that she's got a big personality, but her confidence is shot to pieces because of her weight, and I really need to understand that so I can help her out. Tell me what activities should that you like doing. 
What about PE at school? I like PE. Why don't you like PE? Because everybody hits them and pushes me and that's why I've got loads of bruises. Because everyone hits and pushes you and that's why you've got lots of bruises. Can you tell me about your weight? Do you think you're overweight? Tell me how being overweight affects how other people think about you. They call me up for no plan they like push me about. What did he say? They call me like fake robot and fatty and um, other names. Like what? Mm, sometimes I forget, sometimes I do. Right. So do you want to forget them because they're not very nice? OK. I can help you. So on how hard are you going to work? Really hard. Look at me and tell me how hard you're going to work. Really hard. Well, I'm going to work that hard too, but I want you to shake on it so we both agree on it. There we go. Coming up in part two, Ellen and Dave Forrester are shattered to discover what Jessica's really feeling about her weight. People call me fat and my feelings are proper feelings. Jessica hits rock bottom in her attempts to pursue an active lifestyle. Day one. And mum Ellen breaks down after hearing Jessica's test results. The Forrester family are in desperate need of help. Their nine-year-old daughter, Jess, weighs over ten stone. So they've turned to Professor Paul Gately, who, in a one-to-one -one with Jess, revealed just how miserable she really is. They call me up for no plan they like, push me about. Professor Paul wants to understand how hard family life is for Dave and Ellen Forrester and their nine-year-old daughter, Jessica, who weighs nearly ten and a half stone. So, what is it you think that's going on with regard to Jessica's weight? We've got no idea, actually, because we've been to, uh, we've been to a dietitian and they said, just give her less crisps. What are your worries for Jessica and her future? Her uh, worries is she's getting more self-conscious about her size. With the tests complete, it's the moment of truth um, for Ellen and Dave. We've, I've got the results from the tests that we did this morning, and they may be quite upsetting. So, first of all, I want to know is that you're 100% sure you want to hear the results? Yeah. yeah. For someone of Jessica's age, mm. to be normal weight, they would be below 19.1. Mm. Jessica's BMI was 32. Mm. So, that is well, well into the obese mm. range. Learning that their only daughter is severely obese no. is devastating news for Ellen and Dave, and it's too much for Ellen as she leaves the lab. She's mine. Yeah. She's my responsibility. Absolutely. She's my child. Right. I love her to bits. But... Well, it's obvious you do. I know, you know, no one can... No one can question that, and I think that's really, you know, it's good, and, and actually getting emotional about it, so you should be. First time I've been emotional about this. But he's your daughter, and that's why. You all right? Yeah. Ellen returns sure. to witness firsthand just how that's the obesity issue is for. affecting yeah. Jess. So within that, what I want to do is just touch on what Jessica's said about this. And what we've yeah. done is we've given her a camera in a room to just talk to the camera. There's no one in there with it, and all oh, she yeah. did was just talk yeah. to the camera. So oh, here's yeah. here's what she said. I feel very frightened because people call me fat and my feelings are proper feelings. And I like to get fit and healthy so people won't call me fatty and other names they can think of. Then people give me distress and I get angry. So please, everybody, help me. Jessica's confession confirms Dave and Ellen's worst fears. What do you think about that? Well, she's never said anything like that to us. But I've, I've always, you know, I've always asked her, I said, you know, um, has anything happened at school today, you know, when you know when you get that, you know there's something wrong, but you don't know what's wrong. And I, I try and ask her stuff. And she's, she kind of clams up. She, you know, she, all she wants is food from us. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. She has breakfast, 20 minutes later, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. But how does that make you feel, as a mum? Hurt. 
it hurts. Mm. I need to know how serious you guys are about this. This will probably be the hardest thing you've ever done in your lives. How hard do you think this is going to be? Very hard. But she's hopefully not as hard as it she's, has been the last few years. Nearly ten. I mean, you yeah. know, we haven't got long so, before she's in high school. This family are at breaking point, and bringing them back from the brink will be extremely difficult. But I know how to do it. Stopping Jessica's snacking is important, but not as important as helping them increase their confidence and rediscovering their self-worth. Only by changing their lives will they achieve long-term weight loss for Jessica. I'm gonna to go to the foresters tomorrow and give them five rules which set out how to achieve a happier, healthier child. But it's gonna be the biggest challenge this family have ever faced. So, next day, Professor Paul journeys south to East Croydon with a set of rules that, if followed, will reduce Jessica's weight and turn her life around. Hello, Jess. How are you? Hi. Good to see you. You doing all right? He's going to spend the day teaching the family Nothing. about healthy living. Get out of here. Nothing. So, guys, these are my rules. I'm going to dive straight into them. First one, makeover magic. There's a few things that I want you to do. One is we're going to do over Jess's room, improve it. The second thing is you two, Mum and Jess, are going for a makeover tomorrow. You're going to look fantastic. How cool is that? You're going to a salon, you're going to have your hair done, and you're going to have a, a genuine makeover. Paul's rule for makeover magic is designed to give Jess and Ellen confidence and help the mother and daughter bond. Next one, family activity. We're going to go rollerblading today. Are you up for that, Jess? Yeah. Family activity means mum and dad are leading by example in their mission to create a healthy lifestyle for Jess. And the important one here is an activity for mum and dad. How long is it since you guys have been out together? <laughs> OK. Yeah, Dead important that these two realise that mum and dad have a life of their own as well. Next one is healthy living. When I came in, I saw more snack food than in any supermarket I've ever been in my life before. So we're going to get rid of that. Next one is um, good talk, not bad. This one is really important in terms of the language that's used in the house. You are a really lovely family, but one of the things that I hear is I don't hear enough positive praise. Some of the language that's used, whilst it's OK in the house, may not be OK outside in school and in other places like that. The final one, right down here, is take away the takeaways. Do so you don't understand that? Take so takeaways. Oh, so I'm going to take... Takeaways. Well, basically, they are history. So, to finish off, just so I know I've got some commitment here, how much are we committed? Yes. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Jess. Give yes. me a yes. That's what I want to hear. Fantastic. All right, now that everybody's ears yeah. have recovered, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to sign the bottom. It's been hard work, but Paul manages to get the foresters to sign up to his new rules and wastes no time as he's straight into action. What we need to do is we need to think about snacks and things within the house. As he introduces rule three, healthy living. No snacks in the house at all? Or is uh, the rule going to be... Or, 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 or is the fruit snacks. Well, that's, that's one way of doing it. It's just having only fruit snacks. So let's get <laughs> some fruit. Jessica can eat up to eight chocolate bars a day. Paul wants to ditch the junk food and replace it with fresh fruit. I think we should get some red grapes. Red grapes, you look at that. Big, fat strawberries. Some, and before long, Jess is running the show. Oh, my God, grapefruit! My favourite! And with a colourful selection of fresh fruit and veg, Paul and Jess head home to start the next part of his plan, healthy smoothie-making. Jess has always been interested in food, but the wrong kind. By channeling her energies into preparing healthy snacks, Paul hopes that Jess will take responsibility for her own diet. Right, we're done, are we? Oh, there we go. And it works. Jess loves her smoothies. 
sound like a hoover. Who's doing one? But there's no time for smoothies now, as Paul has other plans for Jess. It's time for rule two, family activity. Skating. Oh. Have you done this before? No, I well, never skate. You've so never I'll... skate before? No, I well, always fall over. Well, Paul has brought rollerblades for the whole family to show the foresters that exercise can be fun. As they get going, it's clear that it isn't everybody's cup of tea. Whoa! <laughs> Why not go down there? Because no, it's No, we're going to go. Gonna go. Just don't look at your feet. Just look forward. Look I'm looking at the front of my feet. Yeah, you don't need to, though. Look just up. in case I no, no. go in some poo. Right, well. But against all the odds, Jessica's giving it a go. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Then suddenly, Jess crashes to earth. You're all right. That didn't hurt. You show me where it hurts. Because I don't know where it hurt you then. Show me. But Paul's eager she doesn't give up. Pull those legs back together. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you trying to do the splits in skates? <laughs> I can't do the splits. Well, I know. I can't do the splits either. Oh, I'm going that way. So let's turn round. OK? Oh. That was a bit of a moan. For someone that looked like your arm had fallen off two minutes ago, you're doing all right now. But when you she's on her doing. feet, she's straight to the bench. Pull it, pull into it. Nobody has ever made Jess do anything that she doesn't want to. But Paul knows that she's got to be more active if she's going to shed the pounds. She's got a bit of a bruise. But convincing Jessica of this is easier said than done. A bit of a bruise. Hey. Oh, we've still got a bit more to do. But for the first time ever, Jessica doesn't get her own way. And after a lot of words and encouragement... Just move your feet. This is the first time that Jessica has ever completed an hour of activity. Now you really do. <laughs> it's a massive and much needed boost to her confidence. So Paul sets a challenge. I want you, I want you to do about an hour's activity each day. How would you get to school? Mm, car. Car. Any chance we can start walking? No, my wife my house. Where is it? She comes home sometimes walking. Doesn't right, well, that, that, would, home, that would be a start. Yeah, that, but that takes 40 minutes. 40 minutes, well, right. there you go. So maybe every, we look at every day of the week walking home. It doesn't go down too well, but eventually Paul gets the commitment he's been looking for. How committed are you? 150%. 150%, that is exactly what I want to hear. Back home and hungry, Paul introduces Jess to the perfect healthy lunch, but junk food Jessica will take some convincing. Do you like this sort of food? I don't like peppers. You don't like peppers, but we've got some chicken, we've got some wholemeal bread. Do you like I mean, all those? I don't like it. I only really like the ones that are white. Paul has banned the takeaways that the foresters have been devouring for years, but will Paul's chicken salad make Jess sweet or sour? It's done in ten minutes, really. She's used to eating what she wants, when she wants, and this is the first time ever that the foresters have sat down to a healthy lunch. What will they make of it? That was the best salad you've ever had in the whole wide world. Yeah. Well, you made it. Yeah. So you've got to be very proud of yourself. You've done brilliant. You, With contented you. bellies, Paul broaches a delicate subject. <laughs> Paul's noticed that the family use a lot of bad language. <laughs> He's got skits in his pants. And he wants to put a stop to it. Okay. One of the comments that I've heard, which is is a very sort of throwaway comment, but I think it does have significance. Is sort of you know the use of terms like arse and big butt and big backside and things like that. It's it's fine to have the language that you use at home, but you've got to recognise that as an impact yeah. on Jess outside of the home as well. And we're going to play a game now, which is all about that. So you ready? Yeah. Cool. Let's go. Yes. Am I younger than you? Okie dokie. Well done, Jess. That's brilliant. It quickly becomes clear that getting positive comments out of the foresters is more complicated than the game itself. Very good. Very good. Can, I, can we just stop there? Every time Jess has 
made a successful move. I've been positive yeah. about it, yeah. and I haven't heard a comment yeah, from well, you guys yeah. about it. Yeah, I'm more interested in the guys. <laughs> no, I know. But... <laughs> Supposed to be positive yeah. talk here. Positive. Have you read them? Yeah, I have. Right. Have you read <laughs> But eventually, the foresters start to understand the good talk, not bad rule. Ah, good oh, spot, yeah. Jess. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Good yeah. shot. Well done there. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Not you're out. Unlucky. Remember, positive self-talk is what we want. As the sun goes down on an exhausting yet rewarding day, the foresters contemplate Paul's five new rules. But how will they cope tomorrow when they go it alone? It's the day after Paul's visit, and the foresters have decided to put into immediate action one of Paul's rules. Rule two, family activity. Paul wanted the foresters to push their boundaries and do things that involve the whole family. As Dave's mad about fishing, they've decided to spend a day at the lake. I'll start getting ready if I can't go fishing. We need time away from the family. Despite it being a family day, Dave makes it very hard to be contacted. But his isolation pays off as he's the first to reel in a whopper. But Jess isn't far behind. Oh, wiener! <laughs> but it's only a tiddler. I a little fight. At the end of the day, they've reeled in 15 fish, and the foresters have had their first day without fights, frail tempers, and fast food. Back in Leeds, Paul has monitored the family's progress closely. The foresters have made a really good start, but this is where the hard work begins. Jessica's and her family's confidence is low, and we need to address that. But the key is, success breeds success. The more activity she does, the more confident she'll become, and the more she'll want to do. And that will lead to a healthy, happier Jessica. The foresters will have to work really hard to ensure that Jessica is one of the 20% of obese children that become healthy adults. Coming up in part three, Jess hangs on for dear life. Push. Oh, I don't want to do this one. Ellen and Dave struggle with rule number four, spending time together. And the struggle of pursuing a new life finally gets too much for Jess. I don't want to bath. The Forrester family have asked Professor Paul Gately to help them reduce nine-year-old Jessica's ten and a half stone weight. Jess has been tested in Paul's obesity lab and he's visited the family at home, setting them five new rules that they must live by for the next six weeks. <laughs> but Jess's eating habits and behaviour have been out of control for years. Paul has told the foresters that they only have a 20% chance of success. Have the foresters bitten off more than they can chew? It's the beginning of week two and Ellen is in reflective mood. You know, Jessica can change. I mean, I mean yeah, she's only nine, ten. There's no way she's going to be 20 stone, or even near 20 stone. No way. Even if it takes me ten years, I ain't going to have her like that. After a lifetime of struggling with Jess, the mother-daughter relationship has been strained. I mean, sometimes I, I, I do tell her that, you know, I've had enough of her and all this, which kind of upsets, kind of upsets her. I do regret saying them to, him, to her, but, you know, at the time, I'm cross, uh, you know, so to me, I've said it, what the hell. But today is their fresh start. Paul has suggested that Ellen and Jess go for a makeover to improve their confidence and help them bond as a family. Hi. How are you doing? This is Isabella. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Hello. Nice to meet you. How are you? It's their first time in a designer salon, and Ellen isn't entirely happy with their trendy suggestions. The answer is no. But it's not long before the pampering wins her and Jess over. But Ellen's not one to lose her head and always keeps things in perspective. You look like a roast chicken, doesn't it? <laughs> And with hair, nails, and almost their makeup done, it's time for the Forester males to see how the girls look. What do you think? I look like a boy. No, you don't. No, 
you don't. <laughs> Oh, that's sexy, that is. Oi! <laughs> Bum bag. Just geese. Oh, don't rest the hair on oh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Very nice, Mummy, you do. So the makeover is a roaring success. Paul's plan seems to be working. The foresters are bonding for the first time. But despite their new looks, there's no respite for the forester girls as they now have to prepare a healthy meal. Will it go down as well as their haircuts? Hold it there and I'll push it in. Okay, don't slide. Ellen was spending over £200 a week on junk food. As a result, Jess was devouring a deadly 4,000 calories a day. So how will she cope with Rule 2, healthy living? Large portion for me and a small portion for Jess. Oh, I'm <laughs> Yeah, so it doesn't mean to say you can have a large portion. But then we can have a smoothie afterwards. Yeah. Ellen's won the portion battle, but will she win the soap war? Excuse me. Don't wash your hair. Don't get your hair wet. We're going to have smoothies afterwards. After initial resistance, Jess tucks in, and the healthy food revolution is in full swing. Jess polishes off her first child portion of healthy food. And at £50 less than her usual weekly shop, the new healthy food is a roaring success. Right. Ellen has won a personal battle. Over the next week, Jess takes to the new diet with gut-busting enthusiasm. So, as a reward, Dave and Ellen wave their makeover magic wand over Jess's bedroom. Hey, Dave, do you want to do a bit? And as Ellen strips the walls, Dave becomes engrossed in another type of paper. Dave finally takes the hint. Dave's going to do some work. <laughs> Ow, that was my head. Go away. After three days of hard graft, the DIY couple are ready to reveal the surprise to Jess. Steady. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Go. I love everything about my bedroom. I'm going to tell you my bedroom every single day. I love it. I love it to bits. Ping pong. Daddy. At the end of two weeks, the foresters seem to be on track for success. But there are a couple of rules that are not being kept. shaking. my head. One rule that Paul set was good talk, not bad. Because you're leaning forward, you big dolly. You're being stupid, mate. You can't have a go, smart. The forester's language is worse than ever. Come on, Dilly. Come on! Paul also wanted Jess to get active, but it seems she's just as much a couch potato as ever. Her one-hour-a-day activity has dwindled to a measly six minutes. And the rollerblades Paul gave Jess remain in their box, untouched since his last visit. I don't really like the rollerblades because... I'm not very good at it. But Ellen knows if they're to have any chance getting Jess on the road to a normal size, they'll have to do a U-turn on laziness and take a highway to activity. Why do I have to have these skates? I wish we can have free swimming tickets. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Jess has had enough and really digs her wheels in. Are you going to get the car? She's not going anywhere else today. <laughs> I knew this would be a tough family to crack, and they've done really well with the food, but the activity is becoming a problem. Jessica is losing her motivation, and Mummy's starting to let her off. That can't happen. Mum has to be there, pushing her, supporting her, encouraging her to be active and to keep being active. It's simple. The more activity she does, the more confident she'll be and the less vulnerable to being bullied. 
but the other rules are falling apart. The language is still a major problem, so I'm going to head to Croydon and start to get this sorted out. Hello. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. So, I'm here to see how you're getting on. And also to take on a new surprise activity this afternoon. Oh, wow. We're going to get on with some activities. Yeah. Find out how you guys been getting on. Oh, crap! Oh, there's number four. Rule number four. She done a rule five oh, last oh, night. Oh. Right, we're going to head back to your place and find out, have a chat about what's been going on. Yeah, OK. okay. All right. Back home, Paul gives the foresters a grilling. So what are you up to, Jess? Swimming. Swimming? How much swimming have you been doing? Not much. Not much? How many times have you been? Three. Three times? Yeah. Okay. What about rule number four? Out Good window. talk, not bad. Out the window. Uh, start it off, maybe. <laughs> Went out the window. Why did it go out the window? Because everyone was really grumpy. <laughs> And just was really grumpy. Yeah. Paul is keen to know if his rollerblades have done any mileage. How many times have you been since we were, since I was here? Three times. One time. So you got all that game. We've not been blading. So we need to work on that one, don't we? And my challenge is, I want you to find a park where you can go around a circuit for ten minutes. So you've got a lot of work to do to get the practice up. But Paul feels that one challenge isn't enough to get the foresters out of the rut that they find themselves in. So he's planned a family day out that will challenge Jess and her family and hopefully give them the boost they so desperately need. Right, we're at the climbing wall. This could be Jess's biggest challenge. I mean, look at it. She's going to be scared. And most times, I'm sure her mum and dad say, OK, don't try. I'm going to say, no, keep trying, because that's what this is all about, challenging her, taking her out of the comfort zone and keeping her working hard. That's the secret to success. OK, so what you're going to do, you're going to use the hand holds and the, uh, the holds to try and get all the way to the top of the can or as high as you want. Jess is eager to show she's not afraid of heights, but halfway up the wall, she hits a snag. Whoops! Paul's keen that Jess's little fall doesn't knock her confidence. You're brilliant. So he gets her to try another wall, but Jess has other ideas. You can, you can push, try. Come on. Slippery. No, no, come on, try again. No, 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 I've got no. You. Go on, step. No, no, no. Jess, Jess, I've got no. you. All you need to do is just push up. Push, push. No, I don't no come on. Do this wall. But Paul is determined that today Jess will succeed in her activity. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yes. No. Yes. No. Why not? I know that you can do that. You just, you, why are you saying you can't? I know you can. I can't. Even Mum Ellen is lending constructive support. We're going well to done. each one, OK? Yeah. And you try your best. I tried my best and that one, I can do it. Yeah, fine, that's fine, no trouble. So in a last-ditch attempt to reach the summit, Jess gives the wall another go. And then just keep edging your feet up. There's a big hole here. That's it. Using all her strength, willpower and a chorus of support from the floor, Jess is just inches from the top. I'm stuck. No, you know, keep just get yourself. Push, 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 you need push, to... push, 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 push. Well done. And she's done it. She's reached the top. And although she doesn't realise it yet, she's laid the foundation for a lifetime of achievement. It's the final week. Healthy eating is now a norm at the Forester's house. There hasn't been a takeaway since they were banned. But Dave and Ellen's social life is still in its infancy. Me and Ellen, we haven't been out for a night out since the kids have been born. But tonight, there's a miracle happening in Croydon. For the first time in 13 years, 
Dave and Ellen are going out without the kids. Make sure you go to bed at half past eight okay. and join me and join me at half past nine. At half past nine, okay. Yes, Cheers. 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 Yeah. Can't be bad. Can't be bad. As they toast their first taste of freedom, Dave is quick to forget about the kids. Yeah. Running around. No, I don't want to think about the kids. Hey. Well done. <laughs> That's what I've come out for, get away from this. Don't talk what for a quickie don't even go back again. <laughs> but alarmingly, the conversation quickly fades. But fast thinking Dave attempts to save their pre dinner chat. It's only 5% of the bowl. But fortunately, their food is only seconds away, and the conversation soon perks up. Dave quickly has Ellen eating out of his hand. Cheers, biggies. Yeah. As a perfect evening draws to an end, Jess has gone to bed with no argument. Night, night. night. And Dave still has time to demonstrate that the art of chivalry isn't dead. Very nice. But I can open the door myself. Cheers. <laughs> well, that's nice, isn't it? I... The Forrester home is a haven of tranquility, but for how long? Tomorrow is Jess's rollerblading challenge. It's the day of the challenge, and Ellen is still in high spirits after being wined and dined. Even Jess's whining can't deter Ellen from getting her skates on. This challenge is really important. I want Jess to skate for 10 minutes unaided and exercise is the cornerstone of her happy, healthier future. But she really needs support from mum and encouragement to keep her going and keep her on this task. That's the key. Jess trying, mum supporting. But having practised only twice in six weeks, Jess is going to have to work hard if she's to move succeed. It. Come on, move the feet, move the feet, move the As feet. As TV addict Jessica on, is quick feet. to realise. Move the feet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this anymore. And eventually move hits the, the floor with a bang. <laughs> Then Jess does something quite remarkable. She doesn't quit. Doing good. Come on, yeah. You went Instead, you've been skating on your own. Yeah. she lets go of Mum for a whole nine minutes of unaided skating. Push them. Push them. Yeah. <laughs> She's short by one minute, but it's a fantastic effort by Jess. <laughs> Coming up in part four, Jessie's video diary reveals a happier, more motivated young lady. I'm looking after myself and I'm going to keep on trying and do well. And the foresters find out if all their hard work has paid off. You can see she's still got quite a long way to go. The foresters have been following Paul's rules for six long, difficult weeks. <laughs> It's D-Day for the Foresters as they return to Paul's lab in Leeds to find out whether all their hard work has paid off. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Good to see you. Jessie's height, weight and fat-to-muscle ratio and fitness are reassessed to see if she's lost any of the weight she so desperately needs to lose to avoid a future plague by ill health. The test's complete. Paul chats to Jess to discover how she's found the change in lifestyle. How do you think you've done? I don't think I've done. I've done pretty good on my food and everything, actually. You've done pretty good on everything, actually. Well, tell me. <laughs> tell me what thing you've done well on. Um, I've done well on activities. OK. Um, keeping healthy and all sorts of things. Do you think you're going to keep this going? How Take away the takeaways. Definitely, I'm going to do that. OK. But how hard are you going to work? Are you going to work the one or ten? Ten. Ten. You promise? Yep. Well, if you keep going, I think you've done fantastic. And if you keep going, I'm going to hear all fantastic stories about how well you're doing your activities and school and no more name-calling ever again. And we'll see a much healthier and happier Jess. And finally, it's the moment of truth for Dave and Ellen, as Paul has the results of Jessica's final tests. So, to the results. OK, first thing, 
she has lost weight. She's lost just over three kilos. She actually equates to about seven pounds. Yeah, yeah. So she's done really, that's really good. well. Yeah. In terms of a BMI, that's taken her BMI from about 32 to about 30. That's good. Okay. But for a girl of Jess's age, the obese cut point is at 22, so anything above that is obese. So you can see she's still got quite a long way to go. Her fitness has not massively improved by about three or four percent. So what that says to me, well, she's done really well on the eating, I think you need to up the activity a bit. Mm -hmm. But I can't, you know, you've done a really good job. That amount of weight is a real good effort, so really well done. But it's not only the physical side of Jess's health that's improved. The key for me, though, is listening to Jess talk, and I said to her, you know, tell me about the sort of name calling at school, because that mm. was the sort of thing that yeah. she highlighted yeah. and said it's not happening anymore. Mm. That's good. And I think that isn't a weight, really. It's probably got to do with her confidence a bit more. Mm. Like she's sort of starting to feel the effects of the sort of rules that we've put in place. Mm. Did you find it easy? Was it hard? It was a bit hard. I nearly gave up, but... Um... And had you given up? Did you give up too easily beforehand? Yeah. But what? Yeah. How do you feel? You've have you changed through this? Yeah, I have actually, because I'm looking at like just simple sandwiches. Oh, there's too many calories in that. Jess, you can't have that one. <laughs> but Paul is keen to show the foresters just how far they've come. You have done fantastically well, both of you, and therefore Jess has done really well. Mm. You have to carry on doing that. So there's no buts. You've done well and you keep on that path. Six weeks ago, Paul showed the Foresters a video diary Jessica had recorded. I feel very frightened because people call me fat and my feelings are proper feelings. Six weeks on, she's recorded another one. I'm gonna be healthy, I'm going to stick with the rules, I'm going to... Um, do everything, everything that make me fit. I'm looking after myself and I'm going to keep on trying and do well. feel very different because I'm losing weight and I am feeling healthier and I am getting a lot skinnier. And everybody stopped calling me names at school. The end. Do you know what? That's really what she said. Mm. That is sounded fantastic. Positive. Sounded positive. I mean, the, the, but the things that stick out to me, because that's the first time I've, I've seen that, the bedroom in the background looks brilliant. Mm. Just the way she is, just the mm. way she looks into the yeah. camera, and her voice as well, just mm. she's got real conviction there, isn't she? Mm. Whereas before, she was head down yeah, that's and right, yeah. really quiet sad. and really sad, yeah. 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 Mm. That is not a sad that child. That determination, that is. <laughs> I mean, that is brilliant. And the transformation is absolutely massive. Completely different to the last one. Well, you've done that. Mm. Thank you. Lovely. No, thank you. You've done a great job. Great job. I'm really pleased with the Foresters. They're being much more supportive of each other. The language has improved. And Jessica is wheeling herself to fitness. It will be tough, but if they keep up with the five rules, Jessica could be one of the 20% of obese children that become healthy and fit adults. It's been a roller coaster ride for the Foresters, but Jessica is finally on the road to good health and fitness. And three weeks later, she's lost another four pounds. I don't want to get fit and have so can eat, and only just a little jump through when I'm not thinner. I think um, I think the relationship between us and the kids is better than it was. Jamie seems to be getting on work better with Jess. Yeah, well. Um, he's lost a bit of weight, isn't he, Jamie? Yeah.